Good morning. <clears throat> Good morning all. Well, I got sent this this morning um, and I thought that's it. It's time, it's time for me to um, put a few things on the table, so to speak. The uh, thank you to who sent it to me, my one of my lovely warrior teachers. Uh, the Tavistock is still operating and referring children for puberty blockers. That's the subject of today's discussion that I want to bring to you. But before I do, know this. I'm pretty funded up the backside. I, I don't seem to be getting any traction from my tweets. I don't seem to be getting any traction on Facebook. The, everything I do is, is undone. People have been telling me that they like something and two minutes later the likes taken off. Right? I don't know why. Is it a glitch in the matrix? I ask myself, or maybe it is a glitch in the matrix. But here's what I need you to do. Subscribe to the channel, if you haven't already, please do. Um, and I need you to share this, okay? I don't just need you to like it. You can do that too, by all means, but I don't just need you, I need you to share it, okay? I need you to share it on Facebook, wherever the hell you wanna share it, Twitter, but I need you to click the share button after or before, whatever you want, and share it, okay, and say something. Okay, let's see whether or not we can get this bloody thing out there through the power of you, my followers, and possibly my subscribers on Substack and the Warrior Teachers, because I can't understand why I'm getting so little engagement, and I don't want to be paranoid about it, but maybe I'm wrong. Share it, okay? What I need you to do then is, if you see it online, quote tweet it. Don't just retweet it, quote tweet it, and say something, okay? Hopefully that will then mean that we can start this conversation, which I am saying we need to start. If you think I'm wrong, don't do it. Right, but if, if, if you care for children and you care for young people who are in this terrible situation, then please do it. Because I'm not saying this is what we're gonna do. I'm saying we need to have a conversation, okay? I'm first of all gonna go through the article and then um, I'll tell you what I, my thoughts are at the end of it. <clears throat> a thousand young people are receiving treatment and up to 8,000 remaining on the waiting list. Children are still being referred for puberty blockers at a gender clinic ordered to close by the NHS and plans for a replacement service have stalled. Well, I'm happy about the latter. Let it stall forever so we don't have to have anything to do with any of this. About 8,000 young people remain on the waiting list for the Gender Identity Development Service. What, what, why are you developing gender identity? A fetid belief system. Why are you... Why? Okay. The clinic part of the Tavistock and Portman NHS Foundation Trust was told to close in July in the review by Hilary Cass. Cass it, uh, released an interim report. She's since released another report or uh, interim something. And I've read it and I was unhappy. Link in the Dubris, right? I was fuming because I... There's something happening. They're fudging this. NHS England aimed to establish new regional hubs. Apparently that will happen. The Tavistock when it was clinic was supposed to close. Apparently that hasn't happened. Um, it's emerged the spring deadline will be missed and no time frame is in place for hubs to open. The Tavistock service must be given six months notice to close by NHS England and is yet to be told the next steps, meaning it will remain open until at least August. Families who have children on the waiting list have described being left in limbo. Yeah, well, I'm sorry about that. While conditions at GIDS raise concerns that NHS England's mismanagement of the closure renders the service clinically unsafe. It has also emerged that 50 clinicians at the service have backed an open letter to the NHS England claiming patients could suffer because the relationship with the health service has deteriorated to the point where there is a lack of trust, transparency and responsiveness. Strikes me as it's your fault. I know you're good people. Nobody's done this deliberately, but we've got ourselves in a pickle and we've got to do something about it. We've got to do something about it, right? 20 staff have quit. What does that tell us? 20 staff have quit. They're calling for a national inquiry, families of children who've had contact with kids, uh, into alleged failings. Right now, those alleged failings are going to be tainted. Tainted by gender identity ideology. That's what's going to happen. It is my horrified thought that this is not going to get any better. A consultation only included in December and five months after the kids' service was told to close. We're still waiting for that consultation. The Sunday Times revealed that a former GLEDS clinician has compared the routine prescribing of puberty blockers to under-16 at England's only dedicated gender identity clinic for children to the doping of East German athletes in the 1960s and 1970s. Whistleblowers told BBC journalist Hannah Barnes for her book, Time to Think, the inside story of the collapse of the Tavistock Gender Service for Children, how clinicians were concerned over the treatment were repeatedly ignored. You'll remember that I... I, I spoke about Hannah's, Hannah's book, Time to Think, which is coming up shortly in my recent video in which I was a little bit upset, to say the least. 
Cass, und Cass undertook a review after a series of complaints. Her interim report did not recommend closure of the Tavistock, but NHS, NHS England said it would be brought to a managed close. Um, it hasn't. With the goal of establishing new regional hubs, why, led by a partnership involving Great Ormond Street Children's Hospital and the other involving Royal, involving Royal Manchester Children's Hospital, by this spring. Um, we're waiting for a consultation involving 5,000 people on the future of children's gender identity services. There should be no children's gender identity service. Cass said there was insufficient evidence to make any firm recommendations on the routine use of puberty blockers and recommended they should only be prescribed on the NHS as part of a clinical trial. Um, I'm sorry, Cass, I think you're captured. Um, and if there's no firm recommendations on the routine use of puberty blockers, we stop them, we stop them now. For everyone. NHS England accepted a recommendation, but the trial has not yet started, meaning children will are still being given the drugs without proper follow-up. However, once referred, the process to prescribe blockers often takes many months following consultation. Does it? Hasn't been, has it? Um, a source inside the Tavistock confirmed that children coming off the waiting list and starting a new assessment in 2023 could be, re could be referred for puberty blocking drugs and that I had referred children for such drugs in recent months. Quote, there is no suggestion puberty blockers are being taken off the table, even for the new services. OK. This has gone beyond... We've we've made a terrible error and we need to put it right. And we are now in the realms of this error is so terrible, terrible. We don't want to realise how terrible it is. So we're going to fudge the issue. That's what's happening here. It is my belief. It is my belief. And I'm not a clinician, mind. I'm not a psychotherapist. I'm a bloody educator, right? What do I know? OK, so you don't have to listen to me if you don't want to. Don't, right? But it is my belief that um, Cass is captured. The NHS is at this point possibly fatally wounded by gender identity ideology and queer theory and critical race theory and everything else that comes with it. It's all part of the same bloody thing, really. But let's focus on this this one particular one, right? That is completely, completely captured by gender identity ideology. And thirdly, that that capture is being held in place by administrators and bureaucrats and EDISRs who are threatening staff implicitly, not explicitly, with, with opprobrium, social ostracization, and with um, uh, the possibility of disciplinary procedures. But they're doing it in a very quiet, calm way. It's not being said deliberately. It's just if you don't play ball, there's going to be trouble. That's what I think is happening, OK? That's what's going on with the NHS. When it comes to the children, when it comes to the children, they are fudging this. They are fudging it because they, are, they still believe there's such a thing as gender identity. Right? When we know it doesn't exist. It's absolute nonsense. It's been taught to people. Right. So a children turn a child says to its parent, I want to be a boy, I want to be a girl. They've either been told that by somebody else. Right. They've learnt it in the social situations that they've been in through their peer groups. They're being pressured by their peer groups or they've been taught it by a teacher at school or they've learnt it on TikTok or Tumblr or wherever the hell it is, YouTube with some sick influencer. Right. This is the situation. OK. Now, the documentary Affirmation Generation has just come out and I put the links to it downstairs. What else do you need? What do you need? What do you need? Cass said in the bit that she put out recently, you know, this does not go beyond the, the, and into the wider social... That's the problem. That's the problem. Paul's puberty blockers. Permanently. Shut down kids. Permanently. And we need a royal, royal inquiry. You know, one of them... A big one, a royal inquiry into the infection of the UK with these vapid ideas and those that have perpetrated them need to be brought to justice for what they have done to our society and to children. Right? That's where I'm at with, with most of this now, OK? And the final thing is repeal the GRA. It is a lie. You cannot change your sex. It's a lie that's in law. Get it out. Get it gone. OK, it's got all of this needs to go. We're going to eradicate the whole lot. All right. OK, so that's what we need to do. Now, I, I'm, I'm at a loss as to how we do that. Well, but I think I can probably posit some ideas because I can't get past what's going on in my head today. Right. When I read this, 
You imagine you could take your child in who happens to be Faye and plays with girls' toys because they're a boy or boys' toys because they're a girl. Because that's the diagnostic criteria in the DSB-5, whatever the hell the bloody rubbish thing's called. That's the diagnostic criteria. You take your 11, your 10-year-old, 11-year-old child in because they happen to be a bit of Faye. Right, and in they go, and it starts 20 minutes later, you know. Oh, yeah, we know what you are. Yeah, yeah, you're just, you know, that's what you are. You're in the wrong body. They can rename that what they want, but that's what it is in the end of the day, right? It's not, you are unwell and we're going to help you get better. No, it's got nothing to do with changing your sex. Right? Because you can't do that. Do you understand that? You're only 10, but you can't change your sex. You are who you are. You get that, right? They're not stupid. They're criminally culpable. If they're criminally culpable, then they can understand this. And I can't get past that. So you tend to, what your 13 year old goes in, get this one, because I really can't get me around this. Now, I know for a lot of you, it, being 13 was a long time ago. It was a long time ago for me, but I can tell you the absolute pleasure of discovering orgasms. Don't you remember that? When suddenly it was something more than a sharp pain and a puff of wind. When it actually became a thing and you realised and lots of things then began to change and the excitement and the beauty of it and the absolute joy and pleasure that that gives you when you're 13 years old. And I hope that every 13 year old in this country is having a full sex life with themselves. And that might be distasteful to you, but you better get your head around the fact that that's what they hope, that's what they should be doing. This is natural human childhood development. Is it 13 or thereabouts to be doing that type of thing with oneself, okay? They're gonna take that away from them. They're gonna take it away. They're gonna take it away. One of the greatest feelings a human can feel and they're going to remove it from them even before they've had it, if they're 10. But if they're 13 or 14 and they go in, they're going to take it away from them when they've had it. This is evil. Evil. Ugh. So let's do a 15-year-old. Now you imagine you're 15 years old and you're 15 years old and you meet your first girlfriend. And you know that you shouldn't, but you do, right? You start playing with each other and it's lovely and it's done in, in, in a spirit of love whether it be with your girlfriend or your boyfriend or you've got a mate you know and the two of you just want to have a bit of fun so there's the two of you having a bit of fun and you're 15 years old and you're for the first time discovering what your body's capable of doing and what you're capable of doing to somebody else's body and how you can give pleasure and do so in a loving and kind way you're 15 then they give you puberty blockers and they take that away from you how anti-human does this have to be before people will go no how anti-human, right? How much does, what, do they have to do it in your front room? Do they have to start operating on people in the front room before you get off the damn bench and speak? Now, I think this way forward here is, and I, I, I'm, I, you know, I sound like a nutter today, but it is, I'm not angry. So it, what I'm saying is this, look at the work that's been done, transgender trends, sex matters, safe schools, all of these groups, fantastic groups, you know, LGBT Alliance, Yep, Gay Men's Network, all of this stuff that's come together, all the people that have been brought together, all the fantastic people that are on my programme, all the people that have come together because the common thing that they have in mind is the protection of the future generation and the end of the lies that are filtering through our society at a rate of knots. That's why we're together. That's why we're together. As one, in voices stentorian, this needs to end. So it is now time, I think, personally, and... I'm not a clinician, I'm an educator, personally, for us all to make a declarative statement. The subscription of puberty blockers to children who are mentally unwell rather than actually having an early onset puberty, who are mentally unwell, needs to be banned immediately. Puberty blockers should never be available on the NHS and the sale of puberty blockers to the UK should be a crime if it's not done through the NHS. We need to do, it needs to be done this hard, right? Okay. Secondly, the cash review should be abandoned and we should open a larger inquiry into how this has happened once we've done the first thing I've said. And then thirdly, we repeal the GRA. You cannot change your sex. It's a lie. And this is what got us here in the first place. All right. Let me tell you, right. It is my honest belief that this is not a time for liberal nicey. Okay. This is not a time for I'm a do-gooder. Okay. We are going to hurt some people, children. But I am not willing to sacrifice the vast majority of children who are gay, autistic, ADHD, confused about who they are, who are not genuinely mentally ill, but are in fact part of a cult that has been taught to them through Tumblr, their schools, their parents, their peers, and everybody else that's bought this shite. I'm not sacrificing them for a few kids who are terribly mentally ill. 
It's that simple. It's that simple. There should be triage, of course, but that triage begins with no. And there should be at least 10 no's before they get anywhere near anybody in the GID service. I want these people in the dock and then I want them in jail. Right? I want them stopped, full stop. It is time for us to say the end game is this. No puberty blockers. No ability to change your sex. No teaching of it in schools. We get it out now. Children can have a tantrum. Let them. We deal with the children that are mentally ill in the best possible way, but we make sure that they understand that they're not well and we're going to make them better. And then we eradicate gender identity ideology from the NHS, from the universities and from the schools. If you think that you can liberal both sides of this, you're crackers. If you're in the psychology industry and you think that there's something that's going to come out of this that is going to be good, you're mad. OK, you can't just be part of it. You've got to start saying no. The vast majority of these children do not have what I believe is a mental problem. They have an intellectual problem. That's my belief. And I'm entitled to it. Right. Call me a madman. Well, I am a madman, but you know what I mean. Go well. All right. Go and have a think. It stops now. End kids. End puberty blockers. End the GRA. That's the message moving forward. And I want to hear all of the large groups that have done such fantastic work make their declarative statement about the situation as it stands in regards to the times. Let's wait and see what happens next, folks, but we need to start having this conversation, so let's please do. Right, I'll see you later. Good luck.